Hi everyone and welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Mohamed Al Hafi and I'm a Math Olympiad coach. So I was planning to start a new playlist in which we're just going to solve IMO problems. So this playlist, we're going to solve uh, IMO past problems only. And of course, the best practice in my opinion for any participants or for anyone who is planning to participate at the IMO or for anyone who is interested in developing their math skills in general, in my opinion is to start solving math uh, IMO uh, past problems. So in this playlist, we're just going to solve IMO problems, but not actually all of them. So let's actually discuss uh, the general structure of the IMO contest. So the IMO, which is the International Mathematical Olympiad contest, consists of six problems usually. So uh, we have two days. The first day we have three problems. The second day we have another three problems. And the problems are increasing in difficulty. So we have the first and fourth problems are easy. Second and fifth problems are medium. And uh, third and sixth problems are hard. So in this playlist, we're just going to solve the first and fourth problems in, this, uh, in any IMO year. And we'll start with the first IMO ever. So if you are ready to start solving your first math Olympiads uh, problem, then let's get started. So as we mentioned, we'll start with the first IMO ever. And this IMO actually was held in 1959. It was held in Romania. And we'll start with the first problem ever. Okay, so let's take a look at the statement of the problem. <coughs> so in this problem, <coughs> we are asked to prove that the fraction 21 times n plus 4 divided by 14 times n plus 3 is irreducible. Okay, so we need to prove that this fraction is irreducible. But what does irreducible mean? So actually, uh, this means that the, this fraction cannot be simplified uh, uh, more. So let's take an example and uh, discuss the meaning of uh, irreducible. So actually, let's take a look at the following fraction. So uh, the fraction 2 over 8. So actually, you can see that 2 over 8, we can divide both the numerator and the denominator by 2 to get 1 over 4. So that means that this fraction is reducible, while this one is irreducible. So that means <coughs> we need to show that this fraction cannot uh, like be uh, simplified anymore. So like it's, it has the same structure as 1 over 4. Well, what does that mean more formally? Well, actually, to show that a fraction is irreducible, that means that we need to show that the numerator and the denominator are, or they have a GCD, which is the greatest common divisor. Their GCD is simply one, or meaning that uh, they are relatively prime. So let's actually take a look here. So as we mentioned, to show that this fraction is irreducible, we're going to show that this number and this number are relatively prime, meaning that their GCD is 1. And as I mentioned, the GCD is just the greatest common divisor. So actually, we, all what we need to do is find their GCD and to prove that it is 1, and then we'll be done. So we just need to evaluate the GCD of the numerator and the denominator. But how can we do that exactly? How can we find the GCD of two numbers? Well, actually, uh, we can apply a famous property, which is the following. So let's take a look at the property of the GCD. So first of all, we're going to denote the GCD by the following. So, so two brackets, A and B, that means the GCD of A and B. So the GCD of A and B is simply the following, just for simplification. Okay, so this, the GCD of A and B turns out to have the following property. So the GCD of A and B is nothing but the GCD of B and A minus B. So basically this is the property. So as you can see, this is like a recursive uh, or an iterative property because we can uh, find the GCD of A and B 
using the GCD of B and A minus B. And uh, like if we apply this in a smart way, we will always like uh, get at the end the GCD of the uh, two numbers. So let's take actually a simple example of discussing two numbers. So let's actually, uh, for example, discuss the GCD of uh, 12, maybe, and 4. So how can we find the GCD of 12 and 4? Well, of course, it's 4, it's uh, simple, but just we need to demonstrate this property. So basically, if we apply this property, so here we have A is 12 and B is 4. So we're just going, first of all, to take the 4 to the first place, and then we have 12 minus 4. 12 minus 4 is 8. So you can see now we have 4 and 8. It is the GCD of 4 and 8. So let's apply it again. So we'll take 8 here. And then what is 4 minus 8? Well, actually, it is minus 4. But we don't care about the sign really here because we can just assume that uh, the GCD is positive. So we don't really care. So let's make it 4, actually. OK. So what next? OK, so let's apply it again. So we'll take 4 first and then 8 minus 4 is 4 okay next okay we'll go to 1 4 here and 4 minus 4 is 0 so we have 4 and 0 and of course what is the GCD of 4 and 0 or in general what is the GCD of uh, 0 and any number that is non-zero well it is this number so it is 4 and of course the reason is simple because 4 divides both 4 and 0 because we know that any number that is non-zero, uh, divides zero. Okay, so basically we have found that the GCD of 12 and 4 is 4 using just the application of this simple property. Okay, so actually, uh, if you can see here, like here with uh, this like might be useless here, because 4 and 8, the GCD of 4 and 8, is of course the, the same as the GCD of 8 and 4. So for example here, like we don't uh, actually need to apply this, we can for example immediately uh, like apply this property in the other way, but let's just keep applying it in this way. In fact, there are like uh, much uh, more interesting properties of the GCD that even simplifies this process, but uh, luckily we don't even need to discuss them to solve this simple problem. Yes, in fact, this problem is really simple. Uh, okay, so let's take a look how can we solve this problem just using this property. Okay. So basically, what we are going to discuss, or what we have discussed already, is how to find the GCD of two numbers. But you might tell me, okay, you discussed 12 and 4, but here we don't have numbers. Here we have uh, like two, uh, 21 times n, which is a variable, plus 4. So it's not a number. So can we do the same here, actually? Well, yes, we can. In fact, we can apply this property for any two polynomials to find the GCD of two polynomials. And do, do polynomials have the GCD? Well, of course they do. So for example, consider two polynomials, P of X, uh, let it be uh, X minus two times X minus three. And let's dis discuss another one, which is Q uh, being uh, X minus two times X plus one. Well, what is the GCD of them both? Well, of course it's X minus two. So yes, polynomials have uh, GCD. But okay, let's not get uh, these things complicated because things are much easier. Let's just apply this property and find the GCD. Okay, so let's just write uh, fraction, uh, or sorry, uh, bracket, uh, 21 n plus 4 and 14 n plus 3. Okay, so let's apply this property. So the first time, we just take this at first, 14 n plus 3, and then we're just going to subtract this from this to get uh, 21 minus 14 is just 7, 7 n plus 4 minus 3 which is 1. Okay, great. So we can see that we have simplified our pr uh, problem. Okay, so now let's do it the same again. So we'll move this first, 7 n plus 1. We'll subtract 14 n minus 7 n is just 7 n plus 3 minus 1 is 2. Let's apply it again. So we'll take 7n plus 2. And we'll subtract. So 7n minus 7n is 0. And 1 minus 2 is negative 1. But as we mentioned, we can just 
uh, like uh, ignore the sign here and just write it as one. And now I want you to take a closer look here because what is the GCD of one and any number? Well, it is one, of course, because uh, the only number that divides one is either one or negative one. So that means that Simplicius is one. And guess what? That means that our GCD is one, meaning that this and this are re relatively prime, meaning that this fraction is irreducible. And that's it, ladies and gentlemen. We have solved our first IMO problem. Done. So because our problem is really simple, let's actually solve it in another way. So let's provide solution two. So basically, the idea of this solution is simple. It's going, uh, we're going actually to use uh, a theorem called Wieso theorem. And this uh, theorem states actually that if you want to find or you want to prove that the GCD of two numbers is one, meaning that they are relatively prime, let these two numbers be x and y, you just need to find two numbers a and b such that we have the following. So we just need to find two numbers a and b such that ax plus by equals one. So if you have this or this is true, then that means that simply the GCD of x and y is simply one. Okay, but why is that true? Well, actually uh, the proof is really simple because let's assume to the contrary that we do have a GCD which is D. So that means that the left hand side we're, uh, we're going to have here AX and this is divisible by D, right? So like X is D times something and plus BY that means that Y is D times something. That means that simply we can take a D here as a common factor. But that means that one equals the multiplication of D times uh, another number. But that means that D is either one or negative one. So that means that indeed they are relatively prime. So this is the simple proof of Wieser theorem. And uh, that means that we can solve our problem in another way. And how is that? Well, here we're going to have X and Y uh, to be the numerator and the denominator. So we just need to find two numbers A and B such that A times the numerator plus B times the denominator, uh, they should be one, so they should add to one. So maybe you can guess the two numbers, try guessing them, and if you can't, we're going to, to do that right now. But actually, instead of guessing them, we're going to find like a solution uh, in an algebraic way, like without just guessing, randomly guessing. Well, how can we guess or how can we like uh, solve it in an uh, algebraic way? Well, let's find A and B using the following equation. Well, we know that, or we want to find A and B such that we have the following equation, right? So 21N plus four times A plus 14N plus three times B. We want this to be equal to one, right? Well, actually, instead of writing it, this as one, let's write it as the following. So because here we're going, we're having n, n, and uh, another free number, we're going to write it as zero times n plus one. And guess what? Now we can just compare the coefficients. So the coefficient of n is zero and the free number is one. So that means now we have a system of two linear equations, which are, which are the following. So the first equation tells us that uh, 21, uh, pl 21 a plus 14 b is equal to zero. And the second one tells us that 4a plus 3b is equal to one. Well, of course, we just can uh, here divide by uh, seven to get the following. So this will be 3a and this will be 2b. So a simple version is the following, 3a plus 2b is zero. So now we, can, we need just to solve this system of two uh, equations with two uh, variables. Well, this is really simple. We, for example, we can solve it for b. Let's just multiply this by two and multiply this by three. And we're going to get the following. So 9a plus 6b is equal to zero 
and here we're going to have 8a plus 6b is equal to 2 is equal to 2 and let's just uh, subtract this from this we're going just to get that a is equal to negative 2 and that means that b is equal to well let's substitute minus 2 here so minus 6 6 over 2 is 3 so that means that b is 3 so yes ladies and gentlemen we have found our a and b so a is negative 2 and b is 3 great so now let's actually check that they satisfy uh, this equation well negative 2 here and a 3 here so indeed negative 2 uh, multiplied by 21 <coughs> plus 3 times 14 is 0 actually and we have also negative 2 times 4 is minus 8 and plus 9 is it is 1 so indeed it satisfies that uh, a x plus b y is 1 and that means as we as we mentioned that x and y uh, the gcd of them is 1 that means that indeed these two numbers are relatively prime meaning that this fraction is irreducible and that means that we have provided our solution too So as a quick summary, let's take a look at what we have done in this problem. So first of all, we were asked to find or to show that this fraction is irreducible. Irreducible means they're, GC, they're relatively prime, meaning that their GCD is 1. And we can simply find their GCD using the simple uh, property that the GCD of A and B is the same as the GCD of B and uh, A minus B. We just applied this uh, many times and we found that their GCD is indeed 1. We finished the problem. We also discussed another cool theorem, which is the BZ theorem, uh, in which we can just guess two numbers A and B, such that AX plus BY is one, and that means that they are relatively prime, which finishes the problem again. So I, th I think that you agree with me that like this problem is really simple, and it was like the first IMO, but actually uh, the more we are going to go, the harder uh, things we're going to be. So uh, don't worry actually about it, we're just going to see it ourselves. So that was, ladies and gentlemen, our first IMO problem in this playlist. If you enjoyed the video, like, share, and subscribe to the channel, and see you guys in the next video.